Good morning, friends. Happy Easter. Doesn't seem long ago that I was saying Happy Christmas. But now, Happy Easter. May you have a, a wonderful Easter day. Friends, Easter really is the heart of the Christian faith. Without Easter, there really is no point in being a Christian because everything hangs on uh, the Easter story and particularly on the resurrection of Jesus. As you can see, I'm standing just outside St. Matthew's Church and behind me here, you can see our posters. And a couple of days ago, I was walking past the church and I noticed that somebody had sprayed silver paint. Can you see it there? Silver paint over one of our Easter posters. And initially I was really cross and thought, how dare you? And then I thought, actually, this is brilliant because what the person's done is sprayed silver paint over the words that say he is risen. Now, I don't know whether they did that on purpose. I expect they just had a tin of silver paint and wanted it to match with the silver on the poster. But it made me think what he's done, this person. Well, I imagine it's a he, might be a she. But what they've done is they've tried to graffiti out the central message of the Christian faith that he is risen. It's good to think about that central claim because as I said everything stands or falls on whether he has risen or not risen. Let me tell you four things that are profoundly different if he has not risen. So if the resurrection didn't happen Jesus is brilliant still but he is not ultimate. You see, Jesus says, basically, I'm going to prove to the world that I have the solution to the one thing the world needs the solution for, that is over death. So all the things Jesus did were wonderful, but if the great thing he claimed to do, which was to get us through death, if that one thing he couldn't do because he remained dead in a tomb, if he couldn't do that one thing, then the rest really falls away like one of those card houses you know you make out of a pack of cards it all just collapses in a heap so if there was no resurrection jesus is brilliant uh, but he's not ultimate if there was no resurrection the disciples are sincere yeah sincere but ultimately foolish saint paul says if there's no resurrection we are to be pitied above all people you see the story of jesus is a story that without the resurrection makes us look as Jesus's followers. Yes, sincere, but foolish. Paul says we are to be pitied above all people. You see the Christian faith, the promises of the Christian faith are for now, but they're mainly for the future. Jesus has promised to lead us into this place of paradise. He's promised to remake our bodies. He's promised to sort out all the mess of the world. None of that happens if there is no resurrection because this is all there is in this life and then we die and that is it you know friends being an atheist is actually incredibly miserable because you've got nothing to think about beyond this life if you are simply living for this life well you might as well just go for it get everything you can get because in the end you're believing there is nothing more and this is all there is so the disciples yes are sincere but foolish if there's no resurrection the church is useful but not revolutionary useful but not revolutionary so yeah we can do nice things and help the community food banks which we are doing and the likes we can be useful we can be kind we can smile but we're not revolutionary we're we're not people who believe in profound inner change because without the resurrection we can't also believe that Jesus will come and live within us by his spirit. We, we can't believe, as I've already said, that the great promises we want to declare to the world. We can't really believe in hope without the resurrection because if Jesus didn't make it through death, what hope have we got? So yeah, we're, we're useful still. We're, we're like a sort of charity shop really, but, but we're not revolutionary. And fourthly, and finally, if there's no resurrection, uh, then the world has no happy ending. Isn't it funny that one genre of film and book is and they lived happily ever after. Interesting where that comes from. You see the story of the resurrection is ultimately that we will in Christ live happily ever after. But if there's no resurrection friends that is simply not true. 
There is no happy ending to the story. There is no hope. There are no great promises to be lived in and believed through. So those four things speak of what this person did as they covered graffiti on the words, he is risen. And I want to thank that person, whoever they are, because they've done me a real favour in allowing me to use that to speak this morning of those four things. Jesus is brilliant, but not ultimate. The disciples are sincere, but foolish. The church is useful, but not revolutionary. And the world has no happy ending. And I, as a Christian, want to say all those things are not true. Jesus is ultimate. The disciples are unique. The church is revolutionary and the world has real hope. One of the things I've noticed, and I'm sure you have, is in, in COVID times, we've all had to fall back on the things we've trusted in. I've said many times to people here, to be a Christian at these times, oh friends, to fall back on the good news of Jesus and his resurrection has been absolutely foundational for me and life-giving. And I know many would share that testimony as well. If you're watching this this morning and you're not sure, please, please think seriously about this central claim of the Christian faith. Don't accept anything less in your thoughts. It's either resurrection and hope and a future or no resurrection. It can't be a bit of resurrection. It can't be merely interesting. If you're a Christian here this morning, well, hear these words from Psalm 118, verse 24. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Friends, today is a day of rejoicing and being glad. He is risen. We have hope. There is a happy ending. It's been a great joy to share with you over these past, what, 15 weeks, I think. I started recording these in the second lockdown in November. Thank you to everybody who has watched these videos, commented on them, shared them. It's been a real joy for me to go around London and to speak to you about the claims of the Christian faith. This is gonna be the last video, certainly for a while. Who knows what the future holds? But certainly for a while, I'm gonna stop recording now. And uh, it seems fitting, doesn't it, that I end here right outside the doors of St. Matthew's. But I want to thank you for your watching, your listening, uh, your, your persevering with, with me. Uh, the sun sometimes shining, other times not. Been all over London, it's been a joy. The Lord, I'm sure, has been in this project and many of you have commented on things that you have heard from God as I have spoken and nothing gives me more joy. But as I close up now, on this Easter morning, might I close with a prayer. Thank you, Lord, that you have risen through death. And I pray for everybody watching this morning that they may know that you rose through death for them and you hold your hands out with scars on them and welcome them into the real hope of great joy for all people. Lord, we journeyed through Christmas and now to Easter and we thank you for these wonderful things that you've done in our world. Help us, Lord, to live by them, be changed through them, to share them with a needy world. And we thank you that underpinning all this is your deep and steadfast love for us. Oh Lord, we love you and we thank you and rejo we rejoice this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. May God bless you this Easter day.